Fiber is the fastest way to create accurate, fully furnished space plans. This 3D software streamlines the early parts of the design process, letting you quickly generate blocking plans, bubble diagrams, and furniture test fits. With Hypar, you can collaborate online in real time, use your own furniture, or choose from our library and easily export your designs to PDF or Revit. I'm Kat, I'm a licensed architect and a product manager here at Hypar, and in this inaugural Fit Out Friday, we'll go over how to create a simple office fitout using Hypar. An office fitout plan is an important early step in securing an office lease. Its primary goal is to answer the key questions. Can the space accommodate the required headcount and amenities that I need? Often, once the lease is secured, this plan is further refined with more detail added in. So let's get started. Here, I have a new project in Hypar. To add my program, I can either click Import Requirements in the top right corner or simply drag and drop my program onto the canvas. I'm using a Mac, but this works the same way on a Windows machine. You'll notice that Hyper automatically recognizes the categories and columns in my program. There's no need to follow a specific format or template. Hyper adapts to whatever structure you're using. I've noticed I misspelled space, so I'll designate this column as the space count or quantities needed. Hyper has already mapped the program name column, but if I ever need to adjust it, I can just click program name to remap it. I've also added some colors via hex code, and I could have used RGB values as well. Colors are optional because Hyper automatically assigns colors for you. All you really need is your room list to get started. To track your spaces while planning, it's helpful to include required spaces and default areas per space. You can also add default widths or depths for your rooms. Otherwise, they'll appear as squares. You'll see your program has this placed on the right-hand side. After importing, you can manually adjust the requirements one by one. For example, let's update the open office. Instead of 30,000 square feet, we'll set it to 3,000 square feet each. To change the name or color of the open office space, just click on the name or color in the requirement list and update. Let's change this to open office workstations and adjust our color. You can also update this program list by re-uploading your program. So let's say you go to a client meeting and the program slightly changes. You can go ahead and upload that updated program. In this case, we went from three lobby spaces required to just one. And that's going to change your tracking, but it's not going to affect anything that you've done on your canvas. Let's go ahead and add a plan. I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my program and drag and drop a DXF plan, but you can also click the underlay button on the bottom toolbar. You can add a PDF plan, image, or DXF plan. The DXF is really helpful because it's set to the scale set in the DXF and we can snap to it. A little bit about this plan, we're working at a single floor with a service core. For this case, we'll focus on laying out the perimeter, which we can assume is lined with windows. Now that I have my program loaded and my plan on the canvas, I'm ready to add a structural grid. I can do that in a number of ways. In this case, I'll use the planning grid tool, which is helpful to create as many grids as I need for planning. So I'll go ahead and adjust the snapping and spacing of the tool to match the existing grid lines and get the right grid spacing. I'll extend that over here and that should be right. Now I can leave this as a planning grid or accept it and convert it into grid lines by using this button here. If needed, I can adjust the spacing and move grid lines around as necessary. It looks like some of the grid lines are not standardized over here, so I'll go ahead and move some of these around. One thing about Hypar is that the best way to use Hypar is to get used to using Zoom. That's because on Hypar, sometimes dimensions and snapping show up depending on your zoom level. With the program grid and underlay in place, I'm ready to start blocking out spaces. If you like to see everything laid out all at once, you can bring in all your program requirements at the same time. So to do that, you're going to click on your requirement, you're going to hold shift, and then you're going to go ahead and click through and select multiple requirements. And then you just drag and drop. And what happens is all your requirements are brought in. For example, if you have four large open office spaces, you can bring them all in at once. 
This helps see the relative scale of things. I'm not going to go down this route, but it's something helpful to know. Let's add in our open office spaces since those are our biggest footprints here. Since I didn't specify a width or depth, it all comes in as a square. I'd like to prioritize natural light in my open office. So I'm going to be arranging the desk to really take advantage of the windows and views. I'll also remove the default walls on this space. If you've brought in a program like I did, Hyper locks the required square footages by default, but you can unlock it if needed by clicking on the lock item to unconstrain the area of your space. This is really helpful if you have a specific square footage that you need to maintain. And for our case, we do, but we can be a little bit more flexible. So I'll go ahead and make this a six foot corridor. I'm going to move this space and adjust it. Perfect. That looks pretty great. I'm going to make this space a little bit bigger. That's going to give me about 2,900 square feet. And one thing that's really helpful to know is that you have a count of your actuals and your program on your space label. Now, let's use the copy dot to make a copy of this space and move it over to the other side of the floor plate. Then we can adjust the space to fit between our grid lines. Perfect. I'll then make a few copies, adjust the space slightly, and make sure I'm leaving a six foot corridor along the perimeter of the core. I'm going to go ahead and start to lay out some of the meeting rooms. And what I'm thinking here is we should probably group a few of these together rather than have them dispersed across the floor plate. So I'm thinking maybe we do some meeting rooms over here and maybe we do some meeting rooms over here as well. I'll make this open office area smaller for now and add a large meeting room and adjust its size to make it a bit bigger. While we're here, let's talk about suggestions. Hyper provides automated laid out suggestions that show seating numbers. So while I'm blocking out plans, I may be doing a little bit of furniture layout just to understand whether the space size can actually contain what I need. In this case, I'd like the space to have at least 14 seats. And this particular layout is really helpful because it shows me that I can hit 14 seats with this space. I can also try to do 20 seats. So let's go ahead and keep 14. I'll add two meeting rooms under this one and adjust their sizing. I can unconstrain the area and make that room 400 square feet or manually adjust sizing. That looks pretty good. I'll add one more and accept some of these layout suggestions. Let's make this open office area a bit smaller and add and adjust some smaller meeting rooms. It's really cool to see some of the suggestions that pop up. I really like this huddle type room a lot, so let's use that and adjust its size. I can copy it over and select both spaces at the same time to change their sizes. You'll notice that the furniture automatically adjusts with the space size change. There's a little bit of an awkward area over here, so let's add a new space on the fly called lounge by adding a new space from the bottom toolbar and typing in lounge. Let's accept the lounge layout suggestion, but let's also delete and move some furniture around. I think this looks pretty good. This particular client wants the space to be an office for tech type work, so incorporating lots of open collaboration is important. So let's see what sort of layout suggestions we're getting for this space. I'm actually going to add this one. I really love this layout, but I'll adjust it slightly to remove some of the furniture so I can get a bit more flow through the space. I can just hold shift and box select multiple pieces of furniture. Let's flip this and see how it looks like in 3D. So of course, this is starting to look pretty good, but if you're unhappy with this particular layout or if you have a very specific standard, you can always upload your own furniture from Revit. Check out our other tutorials for more detail. You can also use furniture from our library below to make or modify your layouts. Let's add a fern to this layout. All right, let's now add a kitchen area here where our tech workers can make coffee and get some snacks. And let's remove the walls, unconstrain the area, and adjust the size. Let's accept this suggestion, but let's flip it so that the main counter is along the side of the core wall. Now let's go ahead and add a storage room here. 
adjust it, and add some phone booth modules along the kitchen area. We have a really large hallway, so we have room for phone booths. We also have some different suggested layouts. Let's accept one of each here. So we actually have a bit of a pattern going with these two phone booth module layouts. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of them. And instead of clicking copy, I'm going to click drag to extend. And that should allow you to keep that pattern going. It's really helpful if you have to lay out a bunch of alternating rooms super quickly. Let's use the measure tool, understand the new width. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and add a lobby. I really love the fact that these suggestions are size aware. So if you go ahead and remove some of these walls and make this lobby a little bit bigger, you'll notice that Hyper automatically starts to give you larger suggestions to fit in the space. Let's pick this one as it has a ton of great pieces of furniture in it. And we're going to add a small reception to the side of the lobby, adjust and stretch it slightly. Let's also accept the suggestion here with the three reception desks. My real-time tracking is telling me that I need three more storage spaces, so I'll add one storage space behind this reception area, unlock it, and copy it over. I can select multiple spaces at once and adjust them. Again, actively zooming in and out while using Hypar is really helpful. Let's start to lay out some of these desks. The first thing I'll do is accept the initial suggestions for desk. However, it's not exactly what I want. What it's suggesting for me is a horizontal layout, but I'm prioritizing views and want a more vertical layout. So I'm going to go ahead and delete most of the desks and rotate the ones I have left. Hyper is going to understand that intent and offer a new, more vertical layout suggestion that's closer to what I like. I'm going to go ahead and select all my desks and adjust the spacing to be more generous at four feet. That looks pretty good. Let's now use this layout and copy it over to our other desk area by clicking Copy Layout 2 and clicking on the other open office space. So one of the cool things you can do is go back and forth with desk suggestions, spacing, and placement to get the layout you want. And it's not going to get everything right 100% of the time, but you can always manually adjust and add furniture and equipment like I'm doing here. You don't always have to accept the default chair and desk that Hyper offers you. With desk layout suggestions, you can actually choose a desk and chair combination, and Hyper will give you automated layouts for that combination. So for example, let's go with our furniture library and pick an L-shaped desk and a simple chair. By adding those to a space, we now get a desk layout suggestion using this chair and desk. That's actually not too bad, so I'll accept this. Now, let's go ahead and finish that last open office block. Let's accept this suggestion, flip it, and move it slightly. Now that I've laid out my desks, I want to understand how many desks are in each space in total. To do that, I have to select the space I want more info on and take a look at the metrics on the bottom left of my screen. I can hold shift down and select multiple spaces, and here I'll see that I have 219 desks in all four of my open office areas. While the space is mostly open desking, let's add some private offices over here. Let's accept this suggestion, but flip it and remove that plant. The next time I drop in a private office, you'll notice that now Hypar is suggesting both the original private office with the plant and the new one I made just on the fly without the plant. To keep your client conversations more high level, you can use one of my favorite features, which is diagram mode. What's cool about this bubble diagram mode is that you can still move and adjust your spaces while in this mode. Another way you can keep things more high level is to hide your furniture and equipment. And sometimes it's really helpful to walk your project in walkthrough mode. While this is a very basic walkthrough, it's still a really great way to see your spaces, possibly even with your client. You can get a sense of the scale of the space and how spaces flow together. Sometimes it's really not that easy to understand scale, relationships, and how it might feel to be in the space just by looking at a two-dimensional floor plan. So going into 3D is really helpful.
If you want to quickly change a space, just type in the new space you want to switch to, like here, where I change and adjust a private office into a lounge. I'll change the sizing a bit, accept a suggestion here, and adjust the furniture a bit. You can imagine people sitting in this lounge enjoying the view. While spaces come in as rectangles, you can, of course, change the shape of a space by double clicking a space or clicking Edit Shape. You can add or delete points and drag those points to create whatever shape you need. And you can grab edges while editing a shape and further modifying your shape. So that's something to keep in mind. Great, now I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick speed run and get this plan done. All right, this is looking pretty good. We've got our desks, we've got our spaces, and we've attained most of our program. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share this project. I can do that by inviting another person as a viewer or editor to my project. If I click Export to Revit, what I'll get is a set of instructions on how to install the Hypar Revit add-in. It's relatively straightforward, and we cover how to export to Revit in a separate tutorial. I can go also go ahead and export this to PDF or image. I can change what I want to export to be 2D or 3D, change the paper size, the margins, the drawing scale. I can even change the size of my labels, including hiding them completely. I can add and change my title block, including adding in a logo and text. For more detail on how to export to PDF, be sure to check out our export to PDF, PNG, and Revit tutorial. The last thing I'm going to do is export my metrics to Excel, and that's going to give me my square footages, my space counts, and a deviation percentage of how far I've deviated from my original program. And that's it. We did a test fit, and it was a lot of fun. It was great to have you join for the ride. If you have other suggestions on what you'd like to see on a fit out, please go ahead and add a comment or send your feedback directly to us. Thanks so much for watching. Happy planning.